every shame. We overcome every sickness. Every enemy that raised against us, O God. We stand in your victory that you won on the cross. That when you paid for our debt, when you rose from the dead, O God, and we became your victory, we give you praise. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this land. This is the land that you've chosen. We are a people, Ugandan, that you've chosen and appointed and selected for such a time as this to be a people that will carry the torch of your light, to carry your word to the rest of the world in our generation, oh God. And Lord, we stand at the crossroad as a nation. Today we pray in Jesus' name as we near of our, of our crossover, as we are near of our transition, oh God. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you stretch out your hand and touch our land and bring peace in Jesus' name. We pray for a peaceful transition in this land for the first time in our history. Oh God, will you stretch out your hand and bring peace in our government. Bring peace in every part of Uganda, Lord. We pray that whatever the enemy has meant for evil, the Lord you stretch out your hand and be the leader of this transition and lead and guide those that you have chosen to be vessels of honor for such a moment as this as Uganda transits from this level to another level of prosperity, of influence in the nations of God. Will you position your people? Will you prepare your church, O God. Will you position your people, Father, those that fear your name, those that carry and are filled with the Spirit of God to be the people that are going to be at the center of this transition that will be men of integrity, that will be women of integrity, that will be full of the Holy Ghost, that will be anointed for such a purpose, that will be peacemakers and they will be called your sons. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that Uganda from the east to the west, from the north to the south, in every region of our national God, from the central government to the parliament to the judicial of God, there will be such a peace in our mini, 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 military. There will be peace in the police force. There will be peace in our politics. There will be peace in our, in our, in our economy. There will be peace in every city. There will be peace at our borders of God. Lord, we secure our borders. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you breathe on this land. Breathe on this land again, O oh God. Have mass upon the church of God. Have mass upon our land. Do not count our sin as the nation of God. Look at the, those that are righteous in the nation of God. And do not judge the wicked together with the righteous, O oh God. Stretch out your healing hand, O oh God. Stretch out your resolution hand, O oh God. Lord, we pray for peace in the city of Kampala. We pray for peace starting from the state house, Father, to the... To the to, from the executive to the judiciary to, to the parliament of God that there will be such a unity Father that the nations that this nation has never seen oh God Lord as we transit Father from this stage of life as a nation to another level that you purpose for this to be our, our future will you stretch out your hand oh God and bring unity in our tribes bring unity in our nation I pray that you become a unit of a nation, O oh God. A united front will be, O oh God. 
a people that will fear your name. May we be a nation that the nations will desire, other nations will desire and say, we want to be like Uganda. May the people of the nations hear what you are doing in our land and desire to come and, and see what you are doing in our midst, oh God. Father, we declare peace. We declare peace. We pray for Uganda, Father. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you position those that fear the Lord. We do remove the wicked, the witch doctors, those that serve other gods from places of, of, of reference, O oh God. And we bless them with those that fear your name. May righteousness reign in our land. May righteousness reign in every sphere of influence in Uganda, Father. We stop every wind of wickedness that is trying to sweep over this land. Father, we secure our land. We secure the next generation. We secure the young generation. We secure our children. We secure our economy with the blood of Jesus. We secure our military with the blood of Jesus. We secure the police force with the blood of Jesus. We secure the judicial with the blood of Jesus. We secure every sphere of influence in this nation with the blood of Jesus. We pray that your hand shall be stretched out on this land. For peace we speak, O oh God. May there be reconciliation between divided parties, O oh God. May there be unity among dividing lines, O oh God. May we be as one as a nation for the first time in our history, O oh God. May you give us a purpose as a nation so we can speak one language in our future, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that what you purpose, Father, from days of old is coming to pass before our own eyes. We shall touch it, we shall see it, and we shall walk in it, O oh God. And many of us, you are going to use us, Father, as instruments of your glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everyone say amen. Amen. Can I hear a very strong amen? Can I hear a very loud amen? Amen! Woo! You may take your seat. Amen. It's always good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. We are already in the month of March 2023. What a glorious year the Lord is giving us. Amen. This, um, this week, um, on, on, on Saturday, we'll be launching, we'll be launching uh, exploits, exploits, Fellowship, Zambia chapter on this coming Saturday. So, um, Pastor Solomon is leading us this week. There is, there is already an advanced team in, uh, in Lusaka. Uh, Pastor Colin McLeagle is already there. Uh, Pastor uh, JB is already there. And uh, a few of our members, especially um, exposed members, are already there as an advanced team preparing for Saturday. And so we shall be there Saturday, Sunday, and be praying for that team. We pray that the Lord will open doors for exports. He's already opened doors in that nation in a very, very amazing way. We pray that our exports will take root in that nation and that nation will continue to turn to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, people. Amen. How many people say the Lord is good? And he's good all the time. Amen. If you, if you can fix that in your mind and say the Lord is good. All the time. Always remind yourself that the Lord is good. Even when things are not going good for you, you need to say, but the Lord is good. Even when you are sick, you need to remind yourself, but the Lord is good. Even when you seem to be at loss, um, at a point of disadvantage, you need to remember that the Lord is always good. He means good to you. Amen? You don't have to feel it, you just need to believe it. Don't, 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 don't ever use feelings on the things of the kingdom because the feelings can change with the sunshine and the weather, but the Lord is good and he does not depend on your feelings. He's good, that is his nature. Amen. Amen. I want to, um, to read a scripture for you uh, in De Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 1. Uh, let's read 
from verse 1 to verse 8. If you don't have a Bible, you know, when you see me up here, you know what I'm going to tell you. Um, can you see Deuteronomy 31? Are you there? Okay, can we read together from verse 1 to verse 8? Let's read together. Then Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel. And he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I can no longer go out. You shall not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself crosses over you before you. He will destroy this nation from before you and you shall dispossess them. Joshua himself crosses over before you just as the Lord has said. Uh huh. Uh -huh. No, 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 you people stop. Let's stand up. I used to be in the choir. And they told me if you sit, your, 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 your voice goes in your stomach. If you stand, your voice will come out. Are we all standing? Let's read again. I want us to understand what we are reading. That, that, just don't read through. Just uh, pay attention to what we are reading. Okay, let's read. Then Moses went and spoke this word to all Israel. And he said to them, mm -hmm. I can no longer go out on coming. Also the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself crosses over before you. He will destroy this nation from before you and you shall dispossess them. Joshua himself crosses over before you just as the Lord has said. Verse 4. And the Lord will do to them as he did to Sihon and Ogi, the king of Amorites, and their land. When he destroyed them, the Lord will give them over to you that you may do to them according to every commandment which I have commanded you. And of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you, who will not leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage, for you must go with these people to the land which the Lord your God sworn to their fathers to give them. And you shall call them to inherit it. And the Lord is the one who goes before you. He will be with you, who will not leave you, nor forsake you. Do not fear, nor be dismayed. Amen. Let's also open Isaiah 16 and read the first two verses. What is Isaiah? Isaiah 60. Verse 1 and 2. Let's read. Arise for your light. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Amen. We bless the word of the Lord. May you take your seat, please. Amen. Now, in the first scripture we've read, uh, it is exactly 40 years since they left the land of Egypt and been walking the journey um, for all, most of the part of, of that journey, they've been stagnant in, in circles. If you look at the map of where they left Egypt and where they were supposed to go, the so, uh, geography says it would have taken them about 14 days. But when you need to understand this about the Lord, when the Lord promises you something, you also uh, prepare a, a, a process for you to walk to that which he has promised you. And the promise is very, very important for the Lord. But let me tell you something. The process is as much as important as the promise itself. Did you hear me? The promise is as important 
as it sounds. But the process of reaching the promise is also more important. And the Lord is very, very interested in this process. Because it is during the process that the Lord starts to shape us, to make us. It is through that process that he prepares us for the promise. Ever had a, a, a dream of your wedding? Anyone? Anyone have ever had a dream of your wedding before you got? Yes? There's a few. Yes, he had a dream. And let me tell you, did you get married the day you, uh, you dreamed? No. Why? Process. Process. Because the Lord wants you to become a husband. And the Lord wants you to become a wife. But before you get to that wedding, the promise is the wedding. But the ultimate call is for you to become a wife. And the process is that what makes you the husband. And many people just want to look over the process and they go to the miracle itself. And that's why many people have lost even after reaching the promised land premature. They get there, they are not prepared, they don't know how to handle themselves, they don't know how to handle the enemies, they don't know how to handle anyone or anything. And the blessing becomes a curse. Why? Because they did not follow the Lord their God step by step for them, for the Lord to give them, to, for them to give Lord, the Lord a chance to shape, to model, but also restructure their life to fit in the promise of God. That's simply the reason why these people spent 40 years in the desert in instead, of, in instead of 14 days. The Lord wanted to make them a nation. Remember the day they left Egypt, they were just a bunch of slaves. And all they had known was 430 years of slavery. No, no work ethics, no structure, no system, no culture. Anything they knew was from Egypt. And from time to time, the only thing they could remember was the food in Egypt. The food became a problem. And when, a few times when they needed water, they cried out to Moses and said, we are going to kill you unless you take us back where we come from. Because the process sometimes becomes so hard on us. But it's not just because the Lord wants us to, to suffer. The Lord does not do things according to our standard. When he makes, um, what's, what's Sakatiba Muluzung? A mode. It's a mode. Okay, the Lord made a mold for each one of us. It's already made before you were born. So that mold has a size. It has a height. It is, it, you must fit. It is not adjustable. It's not elastic. It, can, it cannot expand. It is set for you to go set through certain doors. You must be able to fit in them without squeezing yourself. That's the purpose of the process. So between the promise and the fulfilling of the promise, in between there, the Lord is not sleeping. Because some of you are wondering, you've had these dreams for a long, long time, and the opposite is happening. The opposite is actually the process. The Lord is preparing it. And so the, the first scripture we read, is Moses is going to die like in a week. He tells them, I'm high, I am 120 today and I, I've brought you to this place and here is my end and you must go over on the other side. But it's been for 40 years. 40 years and um, the last, last Sunday when we read numbers 14 and, and, uh, 13 and 14, when they, they, they came into that desert, immediately the Lord told them, you send out spies. Go, let them get some um, info for you and so they can tell you how the land looks like because the Lord had been describing the land to them. It's, it's flowing with milk and honey. It is full of um, 
good things, good houses, but the people there are evil. So I'm kicking them out. I'm giving you the land. So these, uh, th these people go, as we saw last Sunday, and they, they, they spy out the land, and they come back. They bring back a good report. But a report without faith is as bad as a bad report. And so when they came back, and they said, the, the land is good, as the Lord has said, but the people there are like giants. They are actually giants. And we look like grasshoppers before them. And we cannot go in. The ten among the twelve gave a discouraging report that we can't take over this land. So the Lord said to Moses, these people, this current generation, they will never inherit that land. I'm going to linger them around the desert. They are going to rotate around the same places for years until each one of them die except Caleb and Joshua. Why? Because Caleb and Joshua they displayed two things, faith and courage. They spoke up and believed the word of God, but also believed that they could go up and rout and destroy and dispossess those seven big nations in the land of Canaan. But the ten, the Bible says they merited the, people, the, the hearts of the people, and the people cried through the night. So the Lord said, um, these people are not ready. What is interesting in chapter 14, of numbers. So after the Lord had appeared in his glory and he rebuked them, the people repented. And they said, now we believe. So they said, okay, uh, we know we have sinned before the Lord, now what do we do? They, 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 they gathered some strength, some false strength, and they said, let's go up at once and, of, uh, and take over that, the, 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 the land. And Moses said, no, you, that's not the way it works. You cannot go. The Lord will not go with you. You have already refused his leadership. Stay here, as the Lord has said. The people rebelled, and the next day they gathered a few men. They went up the mountain. Uh, I, I, I don't remember which tribe. They went to those mountains. They, they crossed over that day. And they went and started fighting. Ooh, hey. Those people came after them, and they drove them past their front line. Like you, you leave Kawempe to go and attack someone at Kutan, and then they drive you back up to Kagoma. <laughs> That's what happened that day. And then Moses said, told them, I told you, after yesterday you refused to believe. Now you want to go up in your own strength because you, you, you think you understand things. No, the Lord will not go with you. Please stay here, but they refused. They went up and they lost. So the word of the Lord came to pass for 40 days, for 40 years, the Lord started, started shaping these people. You know how he did? He started removing those who did not believe. The, the Bible says their bodies, their dead bodies are scattered. We are scattered all over the, the, the desert. And so after 40 years, the old generation that left Egypt are now dead. And the only three people are remaining, Moses, Joshua, and Caleb. But in Numbers, in Exodus 17, immediately, like a few days after they crossed over from Egypt, the people landed into the desert. How many people have ever been in a desert? One, two, three. You people, you don't travel. I pray for a traveling anointing over this church in Jesus' name. You need to, you need to experience these things. I, I don't, uh, we are in, uh, me and my wife, on our honeymoon, we are in some place, Palm, I do, Palm Springs? Yeah, in, in uh, is it some place in California? And it's a desert. You look at the mountain, they, they look like a bunch of sand. A few palm trees. It's, it's just a desert all over for miles and miles. So we get there and we sleep. And in the morning, by this time, my body is getting weaker and I'm weaker. So I tell my, our host that I'm, I'm, I think I'm sick. And so they say, I, oh, what, what do we do? What do we do? So I, I get more sick. And by noon, I'm very, very sick. I go to the bedroom and I can't walk. I can't come out of the bedroom. I, I tell my wife I'm very sick. 
and my body is getting weaker. So they give me some painkillers. But as the host, uh, the host is giving me these painkillers to take. She asks me a question. Have you taken water since morning? And I said, uh, no. And she said, you need to drink. This is a desert. This is a desert. <laughs> so I gave me a bottle of water and I drank that water. And I drank again and immediately life came back. That's the life of a desert. So when, when you read these people complaining about water, some of us don't understand. They, they were, when you are thirsty in, in a desert, it's not that your, your throat is dry. No, it's your body getting weaker. But these people got the strength to stone Moses. <laughs> so they, 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 they are getting weaker and they complaining like... All it takes for you in a desert place, especially a dry, heat desert, all, all you need is three hours without fluids. And you will not even raise your finger. That's all you need. You go without water for a few days, you are dead. And so you, are, you understand the dilemma these people are facing. But also one thing, they, they, of course there was a problem, but one thing the Lord wanted them to know yeah, at that moment, he had become their Jehovah Jireh. That they did not have to complain, but all they needed to do was to ask the Lord and say, Lord, we need water. Prayer, instead of complaining. But these people complained. And the Lord told Moses, go at the rock of, I think the place is Mera, and strike the rock. And so Moses bring the people out and tell them, you look, what the Lord is going to do for you is going to provide water from the rock. He strikes the, wa the, the water and the, uh, the rock and the water comes in. A, a few months goes by, numbers 20. And um, again, they hit another spot, no water. It's a dry, heat, desert moment. And the sun is scorching in the desert. It's dry, no humidity at all. And uh, the people started complaining again. And they complained and they said, we will stone you. We will kill you if you don't give us water. And Moses talks to the Lord. And the Lord said, okay, uh, take, um, go, go to the rock and speak to the rock. And Moses in anger, a moment of anger, he takes the rod of Moses. He walks to the rock. The, the instruction was simple. The Lord said, speak to the rock. But Moses took the, the road. Because this is what is familiar with us, when we, especially for, for many of us that do ministry. You come out with ideas how to do ministry. For everyone to get healed, you have to lay hands. Not every day, my brother. Many, many times you have to rely on what God is doing doing. And many times the Lord does things differently. If you, start, if you start developing religious ideas of methods and, and th how things should be done, every time they call out the, the sick, you lay hands. Sometimes the Lord doesn't want you to lay hands. Sometimes you just need them to stand there and tell them you are healed and they go home. I'm just telling you something very simple because the, the future ahead, we are going to need these instructions. Do not just zero down with methods of how ministry or how things should be done if you are going to walk with the Lord. His mercies and love are new every morning. What does that mean? He doesn't do the same thing Today as yesterday, you need to rely on him. Why do you wake up and pray? Because you don't know what he's doing today and you don't know how he's going to do it. The reason why we pray every morning so you can know which way the Lord will take this day so that you don't walk in yesterday's favor. You don't walk in yesterday's grace because it won't favor you today because the Lord keeps moving. Are you following? So the first time, Moses strikes the rock. The second time, the instructions were simple. Speak to the rock. 
Because the rock in this moment, in, in, in the story, represents Christ himself. He was supposed to be struck once, not twice. Are you following people? Uh, but Moses disobeys. Why? His anger overtakes it over his spirit. You people, you be careful. As we go in the, as we as we continue to come near the Lord, be careful that you don't mix your emotions with the presence of the Lord. Because this one moment, God told Moses that you dishonored me before the people. And for that reason, you will never see and go into the promised land. And yet the Bible says in Exodus chapter 32, chapter 33, up to 35, if you read all those verses, all those chapters, the Lord talks about Moses. He himself came down when the, his brother, his elder brother and elder sister, Mariam and Aaron, they started complaining about Moses. The Lord came down and said, they said, ah, this Moses, we are a chosen people. Now he's married, he's brought here an African woman. She's dark. She's more beautiful than us. I don't know whether that was a complaint, but anyway. Oh, the ladies missed it. But anyway, so they complained. And Moses, the Bible says he was humble to, to, to the stage that he couldn't defend himself. So the Lord appeared in a crowd again and said, Moses, come this side. And Aaron and your sister, come this side. And I will tell you something. The Lord is saying, in all the earth, there is no one as humble, righteous as Moses, my servant. How dare you don't even fear to talk about him. And immediately as the Lord is speaking, Mariam's hand grows, goes leprous, leprous, and she becomes a leper. <laughs> and that's when they woke up and say, hey, hey, these African women don't joke. <laughs> No, it wasn't from the woman, actually. It was the Lord standing in their midst. And so, I, I just want to let you know that Moses was the guy. Like, he had no fault with God. But just one moment, one moment, one moment of anger, one moment of not paying attention to instructions, he goes and he told the people, Come out, you rebellious, stiff-necked naked people. And I, 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 we will get you what out of the rock. And with the anger, boom, struck the rock. And the Lord said, that which you've done, it may be, look like simple for you, but just because you are, you've done it in my presence, and there is a hidden meaning in the rock, I'm trying to teach you a lesson, and you are using your emotions, to express what I'm trying to do, you've dishonored me. How dare you, Moses, my righteous one, my most humble servant, do that to me. And the Lord said, you never see the promised land. I'm sure Moses repented and fasted and waited for the Lord to lift the ban, but the, the, the Lord never did. So the chapter we have, where we have read, here is Moses. He's bidding his farewell. He says, people, I am too old. 120. I can't come in. I can't come out. And I'm, I'm going to die. I can't lead you anymore. But it's your time for you to go over and um, take over the promised land that the Lord has spoken to you. And he calls Joshua and says, Joshua, you know how the Lord has chosen you. This is all in the scriptures here. You know how the Lord has chosen you to lead these people and make them inherit the land. The word is very clear. Inherit the land. You know, the Lord has a few things that he does in our lives. He can bless you, but we are at a stage, people, in life as a church, but also as a nation, I believe we are at a crossroad of inheritance. We prayed and fasted for blessings and many of you the Lord has blessed. And he's going to keep blessing. But we are at a place where we need to come into our inheritance. 
because there is a difference between the two. The Lord blesses, but also gives inheritance. A blessing can go to anyone. The Lord can bless the Muslims. Some of the most blessed people in the city of Kampala are not of our faith. God blesses whoever. If you, if you read in, in, in the book of Genesis about the life of Abraham, you, re, you are reminded that Abraham had a son called Ishmael. And the Bible says he gave him gifts and blessed him and told him, go away from my son Isaac. And later when Sarah died, Moses, uh, uh, Abraham get married, married again to a woman most of us scholars, Bible scholars believe was an African woman. And she gave birth to five sons. Those, so Ishmael, Isaac, and five others. So Abraham had several sons. And um, before right Abraham died, the Bible is clear and said he called all the seven, uh, all, all the five sons and gave them portions of his blessing. He blessed them and told them, go away from my son Isaac. But inheritance stayed with Isaac. And I believe that's what the Lord is doing to us as Kawempe Worship Center. How many people were here last Sunday in the second service? Amen. Those of you that were here in the first service, you missed a move that you need to also embrace. In the second service, the Spirit of the Lord came down here and spoke to us and said, I am starting to break the spirit and the reproach of poverty over Kawempe Worship Center. And the Lord told us to covenant with him through a sacrificial giving. And we all gave, except those of you that are here, were in the first service. So before the end of this service, we want to give you an opportunity so that you tap into the same anointing. This is not about building the cathedral. This is about breaking a reproach that has been on this church for years. Ever since our conception as a church, we've had people who say, for us, we are poor. They pronounce, they say, we are poor. We can't afford anything. The church should take care of us. But the Lord is shifting us from that stage of life and taking us to a place of inheritance, a place of abundance. The least among us shall be a thousand, and the smallest shall be a small nation in Jesus' name. Me, I'm not ready to die with you in the desert. I'm crossing over. If you're staying in the desert, please stay. And do not, do not call me when I go in Canaan land to inherit. If you are in the desert, stay there. Do not record my phone in your things. I don't want anyone standing up and hey, this is sister so and so. Where are you calling from? Beyond the Jordan, the other side. Me, I want to pick your cause. We all standing on the same ground. The Lord is going to bless us. I said the Lord is going to bless us. And this, in, this blessing is going to turn into an inheritance. Do you know the, the, the difference between a blessing and an inheritance? Inheritance will go from one generation to another, to another, to a thousand generations. It will be the same favor for your children. A blessing can end with you, and your children will find none. We've seen that happen in people's lives, but an inheritance is everlasting, and that's what we are seeking for. And that's what um, uh, Moses is preparing these people for. He said, the Lord spoke this word. And Moses spoke to this word and said, I am 120 today. I can no longer go in or come out. But the Lord has said to me, you shall cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself, himself, not an angel, not a prophet, not a pastor, not some cell leader, not a choir leader. The Lord himself, when he comes to a crossover, from one stage of life to another, you need the Lord himself. Did you hear me, people? It's in your Bible, in verse 3, Deuteronomy 31.3. The Lord your God himself, not an angel. Because some of you, you are, you are satisfied and contented 
When the Lord says, I'm sending an angel and you go around singing, oh, I have an angel, the angel of the Lord goes before me. No, some places you don't need any angel, you need the Lord himself. It is him who crosses over before you. In other words, when the Lord goes before you, what do you do? You follow. And when the Lord goes before you, what happens to your enemies? They disperse. You don't see them. He will fight them before you get there. He will write, route them out for you because, before you know they even existed. Some things, when you follow the Lord your God, you don't have to strive and struggle for life. Why? Because when he steps ahead of you, he will move mountains. He will disperse nations. He will dispossess them. He will do things that you can't do with an angel. An angel will wait for your instruction. And then you only do what he's been told to do. But the Lord is not limited in his power. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. So some of you, have, before this service ends, you need to come and give what the Lord has been speaking to you because this is not fallen to you. Some of you have had dreams of giving away your land titles, car titles. And some of you watching us, that's the reason you stayed home. Because you knew exactly what will happen in this service. <laughs> but don't waste your time. You either stay in the desert or you come with us. <laughs> we are going in Jesus' name. The Lord says, he will destroy these nations before you and will de shall dispossess them. Joshua himself crosses over before you, just as the Lord has said. Now Joshua is the leader for the moment. Who chose this Joshua? The Lord himself. Be careful in this moment. Do not follow anyone that the Lord has not appointed for you. I know many of you love ministry. You want to get an opportunity to be able to do things. And you complain, oh, Kawempe Worship Center is so big and I, I don't get an opportunity. Do not leave until the Lord has instructed you to leave. And do not dare choose your own leaders. The Lord himself chooses Joshua for you. Your Joshua is very important. You don't choose your Joshua. God chooses him for you. And when he does, you don't complain about their height. You don't complain what car they drive. You don't complain about their English. Sit down and be step, stable in Jesus' name. To the near. <laughs> I will say that again. When God chooses your Joshua, stay still. Sit still. Stop complaining about Joshua. Don't remind the Lord. You should have chosen so and so. You are not the Lord. And God chooses as he likes. Does he inquire of you? Does he debate with you? No. When he comes to certain things, you can't debate with God. And leadership is one of those areas. You cannot debate with the Lord what you want. I have, I, I have bargained with the Lord on a few things on leadership that I didn't want to lead. But the Lord himself chose me. And I found myself leading. All my life I've never stood in a line to be voted or elected. Even in the primary school I remember over which class I don't even remember. I was smart. I was nice looking. The, the, the class teacher said you are the, the, the class monitor. I said, no, the class, say, the class teacher said, you are. The, the rest had to be elected. You had to cast votes in a small box. Me, I was chosen by the teacher. And some of you, you have the same experiences, that you find yourself in leadership positions wherever you go. You try to hide in the back. You try to keep quiet so they don't hear your English. You try to hide your abilities. But you sometimes, many times you find yourself at the forefront. And people say, we choose that man, that woman. And you say, what is their name? And you can't say their name. But you, you, somehow the Lord has chosen you. It's God who chooses, who chooses people. Are you hearing me, people? And so in this church, we are very, very careful. Who leads what? Because in the past... And in the future, we, even in the present, you shall hear people complaining. How, what about this one? What about this one? How, how, how come it's so pure? It's so pure because the Lord said it's so pure. 
Mishitekela. It's James because the Lord said it's Jime. I'm going slow so you understand. Eh? Are you following? Who chooses leaders? Now we're not talking about some of these other things where people just still votes and, and they, they, they become leaders. I'm talking about God's leadership. God chose Joshua. And I can trace you back in the scriptures I, why I believe the Lord jo chose Joshua. Because the Bible says, but there was this, a young man when Moses went out, this young man could follow Moses in the tent of meeting. Because the Bible says, Moses had pitched a tent of meeting outside, outside the camp. Whoever wanted to meet the Lord, they would go out and sit in the presence of the Lord. Because the Bible simply said in Exodus chapter 33, that every morning, Moses would walk through the camp, and people would come out and stand at their tent doors and bow down as Moses passed by. Pass by to go to the, tent, to the tent of meeting. But the invitation was open for everyone to go. But no one went. The Bible says, except one young man whose name was Hosea. And Moses called him Joshua. And the Bible says, whenever Moses left the tent, Joshua would linger around in the presence of the Lord. Hey. The rest were busy cooking, ironing their trousers, doing other things. Joshua learned the secret of where leadership and influence comes from, the presence of the Lord. Moses would go home and Joshua would stay until Joshua became his amabel, his assistant, the Bible says. And so when the time came for Moses to, to depart, guess who the Lord chose? The man who had come closer to him. Are you following people? The man who has been consistent at their church attendance, at their intercession groups, at fasting and praying. The man who practiced this spiritual discipline without supervision, but self-motivation. He did it in the absence of any leadership. He became part of his culture. He became part of him and said, I must seek the Lord. I will not wait for the church announcement. I will not wait for church programs. I'm going to seek the Lord. I must have his blessing. I must inherit his inheritance. I must know his presence. I must know his word. And Joshua ensued a discipline of the fear of the Lord in his life. And so when the time came, for the older generation to depart, it is just so that the Lord point, pinpointed and said, that young man in the back, his name Hosea, his father had given him a name, and he said, he will lead you. And the Lord said, in verse 4, the Lord will do to them as he did to Sihon and Ogi, the kings of Amorites and their land, when he destroyed them. That's why I read for you Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2. Let me look at me, church, and listen to me very carefully. The nation of Israel in this chapter is at a very, very exciting moment of life. You're about to go in and inherit houses you did not build, uh, farms that you did not plant, Think that the investments that people just have to die. All you have to do is to dig graves for the dead and go in and switch on their TVs. Paid full sub subscription, paid for a year. <laughs> Roads built, everything ready for you. These seven nations were not stupid. They were hard workers. They had technology that they could even build in mountains. They had technology. Those that dwelt in the valleys, they, the reason why they stayed in the valleys is because they had technology to farm good food. The only thing that they did was they were wicked before the Lord, but they were very smart people. And so as Israel is standing on this side of excitement, inheriting, on the other side, there were seven nations that were about to die. That's why I read for you Isaiah 60. 
on this side of the, of the Jordan, arise and shine for the Lord, for the glory of the Lord has risen over you. But in verse 2, on the other side of Canaan, the Bible says, darkness, behold, deep darkness shall cover them. Same season, same time. And I see this happening in our time, people. I see this happening in our time right now. There is a group of us who has faithfully followed the Lord our God. For years, we've read the word. We prayed and fasted and we look like we have no progress in anything that we do. But we stand, we stand at the verge of a breakthrough that the world has never seen. But our breakthrough is also a destruction of many wicked people. And you can't stop it. It's not in your power. You can't pray for them. You can't intercede for them anymore. When God moves, he moves to bless those that have been faithful, but also removes them that have rejected his leadership. Same, almost same location. And this is going to happen before our eyes. You are going to see in this nation. You are going to see in this nation, people. The wicked, they shall vanish and their name shall not be remembered. But the righteous shall be established. That's what Isaiah 60 means, those two verses. You will rise and shine. Why? Because the glory of the Lord is rising over you. But for those people that fear not the Lord, darkness, behold, deep darkness shall cover them. But for you, the Lord will rise over you. That's the word that I wanted to pass over you this morning. That we are ready, people of God, and God is ready. And whether you want or not, we are about to be thrust into a blessing that you do not dream of. Hey, you are about to go in places of influence. You are about to go to places where you are going to be a decision maker for thousands of people. Your signature is going to be your authority for people to eat or to die. Woo! Just the sound of your opinion will make organizations and leaders run through their offices and say, this is what he said, this is what he thinks. Even before you stamp it that it is right, your thinking, your opinion is going to be as much valid as they want to hear. Because the Lord your God, it is he who goes before you. He's not an angel. There are times when we come into a stage of life where you don't need a pastor to just give you a word. That you don't need to see an angel with flying wings. And all you need is the Lord himself in his full glory to stand before you and tell you, follow me. And when he does, no enemy, no weapon formed against you can prosper. Your enemies may come to you from one direction, but they will surely disperse in seven. Because it is the Lord your God who goes before you. It is him who fights your battles. It's like a mighty warrior. Let me tell you something. You need to read on to the book of Joshua. Hey, the day Joshua said we are crossing over, he led this group and told the, 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 the Levites and the priests, you carry the ark of the covenant as the Lord has commanded us in the past. And they, they took the ark of the covenant representing the presence of the Lord. And the priests stepped in water. And they continued in the water of Jordan. But as they continued, the presence of the Lord departed that river. And they walked on dry ground. Hey. And the Bible says, after they crossed over, they picked up heaps of stones and they made a memory and they said, this is the spot where we cross over. We shall always come back here to remember that the Lord is good, that the Lord is faithful. He has done a miracle of the past. 
You need some stones in your life. You need landmarks where you look back and say, it was here in Kawempe Worship Center that I first spoke in tongues. It was here at Kawempe Worship Center that I felt the presence of the Lord. It was here at Kawempe Worship Center that I was first anointed and the Lord gave me my first blessing. And you need to, to read about this river Jordan. Many times in history, at that very spot, that's where Johnny started his ministry and planted the church. The Baptist church started there. And that's where Jesus was baptized. Hey, why? Because many years ago, the presence of the Lord in that very spot departed the water. That's what it means for the Lord to go before you. He does things that will always be memorable for your life, for the rest of your life. You never forget. Even if you, when you are wandering away, you look about, you look back at the heap of stones and say, oh my God, this is not just a heap of stone. This is a memorial of what the Lord has done in the past. What he did here is able to do in our future. What is done here is able to do it again and again. Amen. I'm going to invite Apostle Paul. I think we have about 15 minutes. All of you that did not give last, last week, last Sunday. Hey, Apostle Paul is coming to your seat right now and you are going to. to. We are not forcing you. If you want to stay in the desert, oh, please stay. stay. If you want to stay in the desert, it's your call. If you want to come with us, listen to what the Apostle has to say. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Robert. I will I request all of us to stand. We're going to pray. Um, but let me read for those of you who missed the memo. When we're praying here, On the Friday before, uh, the Friday before last Sunday is called what? The Friday of the other week. We had an overnight that wrapped up the revival week. And there was a couple of people here that prayed. As I was standing right behind there praying, um, you know, minding my business as it were. And the Lord started opening my heart to understand um, First Samuel chapter 2, verse 9. And the verse says that he will keep the feet of his saints. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. You know, it's, it's one of those verses that are so mixed up. They are bringing themes from all over and throwing them in one verse. But the, the Lord was started showing me that many times the reason why the saints sleep is that he's not keeping your feet because he'll keep the feet of the saints and he says that when the Lord keeps your feet what happens? the wicked are put in silence in darkness that's what the verse says and because of that um, the Bible that verse ends saying that by strength shall no man prevail. It's not by your wisdom or your understanding that you're going to prevail. Many of us have a thinking that it is you've done so well for yourself, you will prevail. But the verse says, by strength shall no man prevail. And then he led me to read back verse 8. And verse 8 says that he raises up the poor out of the dust. And he lifts up the beggar from the dunghill. Begging places you on a place called the dunghill. That's what the spirit of the beggar is. It places you on the dunghill. It's not me. It's, it's interpretation of the Bible. That when you have a begging spirit on you, guess where you're seated at in the spirit? On the dunghill. Do you know what the dunghill is? I think we read these words and they look foreign to us. The dunghill is somewhere in Bugorobi. Or here in Rubiji. 
there's a place on Northern Bypass when you're driving towards Nansana. When you're passing there, you need to hold your nose. That's a dunk hill. And the Bible says that a spirit of begging has placed you in a position of the dunk hill. That's where you're seated at. I'm not insulting you. I'm simply painting the picture that I saw. And he says that when God begins to work, he raises up the poor from the dust and he lifts up. Can you imagine? He lifts up the beggar from the dung hill. Yeah? And what does he do after that? He sets them among princes to make them inherit the throne of glory. And it was clear it was not the throne of glory up there. The glory that men understand. Are we together? The room is so quiet. Eh? Are we together? For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. And that night when we went into prayer, when I was asked to come up and lead for those who were around, I did not really intend to move in that direction of prayer. But I was led to pray in that direction of prayer. And what I prayed in the direction is the same direction that the Lord led us into in the second service of last Sunday. So the Lord wants to lift the poor out of the dust. He wants to lift the beggars out of the dunghill. And there was an instruction. So if you never got an opportunity to make a pledge, and by the way, as <laughs> biblically, when you're bringing these kinds of pledges before the Lord, you need to listen to the Lord. Just walking, pacing the floor. She wasn't mad. She wasn't crazy. She was in labor. You know, but if you don't understand and you walk into that labor ward, you may think the woman is crazy. A woman of honor, a woman of distinction, totally naked, just pacing the floor. That's what labor pains means. That means that there's going to be things you will see that you will not understand in this season. Because the Lord is transiting people, he's bringing birth to something. He is causing something to come forth. It is painful sometimes. Sometimes there is letting of blood. Sometimes there is screaming and shrieking. It's not even screaming. The word is shrieking. People scream with voices that do not appear with the knowledge and the understanding of men. So as we get into the next five minutes of prayer... We'll sing this song and then just feel free to transit into prayer as you deal with yourself before the Lord. Pray that you will transit. Pray that you will transit. Did you hear me what I said? Pray that you will transit. May we never lose our wonder. May we never lose our wonder. Wide-eyed and mystified, may we be just like a child, staring at the glory of the King. May we never lose our wonder. 
May we never lose our wonder. Wide-eyed and mystified, may we be just like a child, staring at the glory of the King. Let us sing it again. May we never, may we never lose our wonder.
Lord chooses to work, He is beautiful in all His ways. I gave an example of a woman in labor. Even in that labor, the Lord remains beautiful in all of His ways. Even when it hurts, the process of birth oftentimes brings pain. There's a story in 1 Samuel 21, verse 6. David is running away from Saul. He runs into the temple of the Lord and he does something that no one should ever do. He requests for bread and the only bread that's available is the kind of bread that David cannot eat. But because the grace of the Lord prevailed, even in that the Lord was beautiful. He ate the bread. His men ate the bread. It has never happened before. It had never happened afterward. But because the Lord was present, sometimes the instructions of the Lord look weird. They look strange. But He's beautiful in all His ways. I just want you to just lift up your voice. I want to invite the church. I gave an instruction. Pray for transition. We have about two minutes. Pray for your transition. There is something that the Lord is doing. It is in prophesying that we are transformed into other men. When you do not speak, prophesying is when you speak in tongues, when you pray in the Spirit, when you pray under the action of the Spirit. Transformation, transition, change. The things that people need to see, the blessing is going to come through. Sometimes people seeing a different you. You need to prophesy over yourself. Lift up your voice. I want to hear people in the house prophesying. Lord, we bless your name. Father, we stand in your presence. In your presence alone do we stand this morning. There is no better place. There is no better blessing. There is no better dwelling than to stand here with you in your presence for you that transitions men you that turns men into other men we stand before your presence this day turn us into other men turn us into other women let those that knew us before look at us and see your glory shine upon us for you have a word of promise that in the moment of darkness that your glory shall shine upon us your word says that we should arise and shine. Lord, with our sacrifices this morning, we arise. With our giving this morning, we arise. Bringing our hearts and our presence before you this morning, we arise. We say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To your work of the season. Yes, Lord. To your transition. Yes, Lord. To that which you do in our lives. King of glory, be glorified with our giving. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I just want to remind you that give tonight and those that have given, you did not give to men. You give to the Lord. If at all you think or you did give, thinking that you're giving to honor us, I give you permission to come and withdraw whatever you gave. But I need you to understand that as you give, give as unto the Lord. Your giving is not to Kasozi, it's not to Bukenya, it's not to Taka, it's not to, to Mayanja, it's not to anyone of the leaders of this congregation. It is as unto the Lord. Lift up your hands and I bless you. Father, I bless your people. I pronounce a gate opening blessing upon them. Let them see a new day. Let them see new rooms. I hear the word when we were praying that Friday. The Lord brought a word. There is a scripture that says that lift up your heads, O Ligas. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. May ancient doors that did not open for your forefathers, let them open for you. Because you are different. 
and because the Lord is beautiful in all his ways I bless you I speak difference I command I don't request I command a new day a new day a new day a new day not only upon these that stand here today upon each and every one that has been part of this giving let there be a new day that dawns a day that you never dreamt about a day that you could never even imagine let it be the day that when you see it dawn you will say this is a beautiful day behold how good and pleasant it is the day that the Lord has made let that day dawn before you and upon you may you find favor before men may you find favor before men may you find before men may you find favor before men in the name of Jesus 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 Sandra bring come, come with your husband here the rest of you can get back of the Lord in Jesus' name.